and i feel like in that sense it's very difficult to rate ten hag as a, an elite manager maguire is a leader dude like even if the first goal was on him he's more vocal and i think dilek coming into that team probably doesn't command the same like this thing in that defense i i don't think eric ten hag will win the title this year or eric ten hag is the manager that will get us to the title is united job too big for ten hag question for you boys how big is united right now i think i need to ask the question back to you i think it's the biggest club in english in uh, england okay i'm going to snap this up uh, like mm. clip this moment for my life but, uh, <laughs> yeah uh, that was a bait animesh fell for it uh, <laughs> but yeah i don't know see th- one other thing is also that this is just the second game week yes we are not going to go i, I don't think eric ten hag will win the title this year or eric ten hag is the manager that will get us to the title if he does it's like probably miraculous right like no one's no one's probably like expecting that from eric ten hag but at this point in time i think it was i still be back in yours that it was the right decision to like keep eric ten hag with how much how many things that they need to change they felt like manager stability is probably like a, they hedged against that fact right and i think game week 2 is too reactionary to say that like oh let's get him out of the way especially considering the kind of defeat that we had right those were down to like individual errors some luck if you think about zerksy goal like if that didn't if zerksy was not there it would have been a goal i think the whole narrative here would have been different sid would have had his piece on saturday morning <laughs> things would have been completely different like if that goal went in right so i don't know if it's too early to say that but at this point i still believe that it was the right decision to just keep him on do you guys disagree no but- i completely agree and i it's kind of like look at it from a different lens like if you completely remove ten hag from the perspective of right you see united is it by itself one of the biggest clubs like you just said i mean so that being as <laughs> now you're going to quote me quote me on it every of time first <laughs> first but no look look ever since alex ferguson left right we've had a whole bunch of managers who have been okay, except david moyes who have been very successful almost everywhere else they've gone and they've managed big club look at van hal you look at mourinho solskjaer fine whatever but these managers are not novices they are not some people who are incapable of winning or like bringing a football team to play bringing a team to play good football on the pitch it's more of a systemic issue at the club which is what i think inios are trying to tackle in this first season completely starting from fresh and eric ten hag is one of the cogs in the inios machine right now so he i would want to evaluate ten hag once you know if if once he gets 10 games in a row with his preferred starting 11 give him 10 games i want to see how so, we play and if yeah. if we still don't do well yeah fine it's not meant for ten hag no i think to be honest no i i'm not arguing or i don't think anybody is arguing for the fact that ten hag should be fired i think he should be, should have been but like you could still make a a case of him staying in the job right uh, there were not many managers available there was a lot to change all of that stuff is totally true but i think when the question is whether united's job is too big for ten hag i think it feels like it's too big for ten hag i think he's just on may he just doesn't have the stature to have that job he reminds me of emery at arsenal where uh, it might be because of the language barrier it might be because of just lack of the ability to control the narrative and the media plus being very pragmatic when we personally i felt like he shouldn't have been like for example he subbed on he took off maguire who was not bad i mean yeah you could say that first goal was the cause of him but then there were like five other people who could blame for that first goal too but then his whole, all of his substitutions were defensive versus all of brighton substitution were offensive and that kind of and even brighton's manager is like two games into the season or into his job so it's not like he know, knows his players he's just experimenting he's just putting random stuff uh, like he's putting different combinations on the field and trying to make something off the game and i feel like in that sense it's very difficult to rate ten hag as a, an elite manager yes he wins the cups uno emery did it, did win the cups too but then would you uh, like all all of these achievements are probably like second tier 
achievements of which are similar to like Unai's Europa League or Unai's Cup uh, victory or something like that. But he's never triumphed against a big opposition or in a, in a in a big tournament. And I feel like especially him trying to placate the media now in a way where like oh we came off without any injuries or like trying to get on the good side of Roy Keane in interviews and all of that stuff that doesn't come across as somebody who's like confident. It comes across as someone who wants buy time for him, uh, which kind of makes me believe that okay, I maybe mean, he's just not it for United. Or for yeah, a and, club like United, and maybe I think if we see it, I I agree with all of the points. I think the substitutions yesterday were like below the par. He was trying to like rush Dilip into the system, mm-hmm. and there was no need for like for you to like sub Maguire off. When you make a Maguire is a leader, dude. Like even if the first goal was on him, he's more vocal, and I think Dilip coming into that team probably doesn't command the same like this thing in that defense, right? I feel like if I look at United defense right now, I think Onana, Mart. Martinez and Maguire are lot vocal. They organize the defense, and that's what led to the second goal. So I completely see it. I also don't see the point in like trying to bring on Anthony at 89th minute. He's an 80 million signing, right? He's an 80 million signing. He's probably not happy at United being on the bench, like with or without the form. Like personally, he's probably not happy. And he's, I mean, when you bring him on at the 90th minute, there's not really that much time for him to like go and like change the game that much, right? Like you can't influence it that well, and. I think that he was at fault for the second goal. Like he shouldn't have rushed that, like you know, challenge. And if he would have stood his ground, he could have made. He could have forced Brighton to make another play. I don't think there would have been that goal. But he just wanted to be that hero. He just wanted to rush that moment. All in all, I think Ineos also sees that like Eric Ten Hag is on borrowed time. My argument with all of this is that maybe they're letting this play out yeah. because they want to see how things are. Like let's focus on the positives, right? Like we generated what 80 million. in transfer sales this season which is i think the highest since like ronaldo left the club i don't yeah. think we've ever had that much mon- that many sales right and some of the high wages have been cleared out and the average age of the squad went down significantly and the people that who are at the squad right now with high wages are only at the squad because they can't be moved on so they're trying to find that solution or in place and maybe eric ten hag is one of them right like because there was fan pressure in yours didn't feel like it was the right time to like make that change of a manager they did try to talk to tukel it's uh, it's yeah. even eric ten hag himself agreed right yeah. tukel didn't want to come and maybe it was maybe it was something that didn't work out between inios and tukel they are just letting this experiment drag on to sets point i think they just want to give him 10 to 12 games with a preferred starting lineup and see what he's actually all about and it's a risk worth taking in their opinion but at the expense of our season is something that is like a very sticking point to me uh, what do you think about the like any of you but like the press i felt like the press and structure was a little bit better it was wasn't yeah. like gangu approach that we saw last season yeah and i think that's where i think the improvements and corrections are coming in from previous season where we we had so many injuries we were all over the pitch we had gaping holes in the mid uh, yesterday was more of individual lapses in concentration which led to goals it wasn't a systemic issue in the team or in the tactics which led us in conceding those goals and in terms of the press like you mentioned i think we were very very measured and tactical in terms of when to press like look for the triggers of press and then press so that is something that only a coach will do it's it's all about coaching and you know players truly understanding what is my pressing trigger when should i actually leave my position and go and press the other player so that is something a coach's job is and i think if that is happening yeah it is an indication that the players are responding to the man the, the manager and the other coaching staff so that is good to see i'm the positives for me are that we are not repeating the same patterns of mistakes or play that did not work for us last season that stubbornness that we accused ten hag of is sort of not showing too much this season he is not picking favorites he is you know playing players on merit if maguire played well he's playing maguire if anthony is poor he's dropping anthony so all these are good signs i just want somehow you know like the team to be professional and complete a full 90 minutes without you know defensive errors or like individual errors and i think once that happens we'll sort of get into the rhythm and once like you start believing in yourself as a team as a group of players i think things start falling into place also that's what happens with arsenal or city as well like you know they just believe in themselves united don't have that feeling right just just yeah. one last point going back to the topic right which is whether he's timid or not i feel like he's another thing against him is like he can't put all the aspects of the game together like some games you'd see the defense doing well some way some games you'd see the attack doing well pressing is fine but like defending is not set piece defending is not i just feel like 
just putting all of it together is something that I haven't seen from his tenure at United, like we do at City or Arsenal or, or any of those clubs. So, yeah.